Good evening. Welcome to Community Solutions Consulting Community Conversations. My name is AJ Davis, and I have had the privilege of working alongside a team of local consultants on the comprehensive plan for the city of Charleston. This plan is important to manage the growth and development that will take place over the next 10 years. Tonight's conversation will feature Mr. Jacob Lindsay, the director for the city planning department. Jacob, welcome. Thanks so much for having me on, AJ. It's great to see you again. All right. Thank you so much for being here. So let's jump into this. What are the key things that are used to create a comprehensive plan and why are they important? Well, I think, um, AJ, you know, when, when folks think about a comprehensive plan, um, that can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. That can mean, um, you know, something that has to do with schools or has to do with transportation or has to do with, um, you know, with taxes. And in this case, when we talk about a comprehensive plan, what we're talking about is the physical growth of the city. This is something that's used by the city of Charleston's planning department. And it describes how the city should change over time in terms of what buildings are built, where they're built, where housing goes, how transportation is created to fit those things together. And ideally, that vision for the future is created in partnership with the people who live here, who work here, and who come to school here every day. It's not a plan that is imposed by elected leaders or city staff people. And the ideal world, the one we're trying to create, it is created in partnership with the people who reside and work in this place. And to answer your question, what goes into a comprehensive plan? Well, hopefully the, the desires and the needs of the people who are in the city of Charleston is what goes into the comprehensive plan. And that's what we're trying to do. Okay. All right. Uh, why are those things important as it relates to a comprehensive plan? Well, so, um, you know, as all cities are always changing, right? That's, that's, um, that's a given, especially in America today, cities are always changing. And I think that we all know today that there is uh, a shortage of faith in government, <laughs> you know, not in my lifetime. Has there ever been as much of a, of a, um, a, a lack of, of faith in government? and its ability to have a better outcome and create a better quality of life for people. And that's really what this plan is about. That's what this work is about. It's about working together as a community to build a higher quality of life in the future when it comes to the, the physical environment, you know, the physical city we live in. Um, so it's important that we all work together to create that. Okay. Now, this is a question that is somewhat similar. So I hear you talking about the comprehensive plan. In layman's terms, how does a comprehensive plan impact everyday citizens in their routine lives? What a great question. Um, right, so if you're, yeah, if you're not, a, you're not a, a, um, a planning geek, a government wonk, you don't do this stuff every day. You're some, you gotta live in the city of Charleston. We come to work here every day, right? You're, you're somebody who is, um, Charleston's your home. And how does this impact your life? So there's a good chance that if you live here, you live in a neighborhood. If you come to work here, you go to uh, the, the place where you work, whether that's at a, a hospital or whether that's in a, a restaurant or a hotel or an office or wherever that is, the place that you live, the place where you work, how you get between those two places and the experience that you have during the course of that entire day is determined in large part by the physical layout of the city. And this plan, uh, all city plans, describe how the city's layout is gonna work in the future, 10, 15, 20, and 30 years in the future. So what we're doing now is considering how quality of life for our residents, for you, are, is gonna be improved in the future. So this is a chance for us to think about how your daily life works. Is, is your commute working for you? Is your neighborhood a great place to live? Where you go to work every day, is that a place that is easy to access? Can you get what you need out of that place? All of those questions are things that we have to consider because that's, um, that's what goes into this plan and that's what the plan describes. If we do a good job 
living and working in the city of Charleston will be a great experience for everybody. And if we do a bad job, it won't be. We'll have less quality of life. It's a long answer, but it's a comprehensive plan. Everything goes into it. <laughs> right. Well, you know what? That, that's a good answer. And that kind of segues into my next question. So when you start talking about quality of life issues, I know that in particular on Peninsula Charleston, one of the major issues that impact the everyday lives of people tends to be the flooding. How does the comprehensive plan address that or does it? Well, um, if, you, if you've spent any time in Charleston in the past 10 years, you know that flooding is one of the major um, challenges that we face. It shapes everyday life. Um, and we've only experienced more and more flooding as time has gone, gone on. Um, we experienced flooding from tides. Um, we have a rainstorm in the city floods. And what that does is it causes roads to close down. You can't drive around. Um, if you live in a place that is low and subject to flooding, you could have your property flooded or your house flooded. Um, I personally have lost a car that was parallel parked in a place that got flooded and it was total because of flooding. Um, it's affected every part of our life. And if we don't think about how our city interacts with water and how we manage water, then we're being irresponsible. This plan has got to take this issue into account and we've got to work together to figure out how the city confronts flooding because it's a big complex challenge. And if we don't think about it now, we're gonna really be in trouble in the future. And that's why we put the issue of flooding front and center in this comprehensive plan. So we can have the best minds think about it and give us recommendations, but also so that we can hear from folks so that we know where flooding occurs, how it occurs, and really understand what's going on so we can make good decisions to prevent it in the future. It's just a huge issue and it affects every part of our life here. And it's right front and center in this plan. Okay, well, segue into the other quality of life issue that is a major concern in the entirety of the Charleston area, and that's housing. Does this plan impact housing in any way? Well, it, it, it absolutely does. You know, that's also been something that um, is a major focus from us. What we've heard over and over from, from people over years is that flooding is a challenge. But we've also heard people say that the cost of living is a real problem for our community. And when we look around the nation, we can see other successful cities, cities that have done really well, that have become unaffordable because so many people want to move there and there's only so much supply of housing. And what that, what that does to those communities is that it, it makes it a place that only the wealthy can afford to live in. And that's not a real city. A real city is a diverse place with people from all backgrounds, all races, all walks of life. That's what makes a true city. And we can't be in a situation where we lose Charleston's urbanity, lose our cultures. In order to do that, we got to keep the city affordable. It's a major, major challenge for us. And we acknowledge that housing costs are going up. They are because we have a limited supply and people want to move here. This is a desirable place to be. So this plan is really um, focused on housing in a way we've never done before. We're looking at how people are affected by housing cost. How are people burdened by housing cost so that we can deliver more housing supply and help people to stay in the homes that they live in by creating programs and using programs to help folks maintain their houses. It's just a critical issue and it's so important for us um, because if we don't get proactive about the housing equation, the city will only be affordable to the wealthy and that's not a suitable outcome for us. Okay. And so that kind of segues into another hot topic, especially in the Charleston area and that's the subject of development with many residents feeling as though they are being squeezed out because of the overabundance of development. Does the comprehensive plan address that in any way? Well, it absolutely does, AJ. And this is such a fascinating topic, uh, especially for somebody who, who's a lover of cities. Um, you know, when cities grow, that means that people want to move there. And that happens because of forces, economic and social forces that are going on at a national level. You know, we can't, we don't have a wall that we can put up. So people want to be here in this region. And if you don't have enough supply to meet that demand, that means that the cost of housing is going to go up, right? It's a supply demand system of housing. We live in a nation without a national housing policy. It's a free market system. So 
as folks thinking about the future of the city, we've got to make sure that we have enough housing supply to meet that demand in order to keep housing costs at their current level, or ideally even lower. So the city's got to grow. If we don't, costs will only go up, it will only make rents higher, and it will only make housing costs higher. So we have to, as a community, acknowledge that idea that if we're growing because people are moving here from all over the country, we've got to add more housing supply. So the question is, how do you do that in a way that actually enhances the community? How do you do it in a way that makes the city better, stronger, and more diverse? That's the question that we're looking at. So that means you've got to grow in places that don't disrupt existing communities, places that are high and dry and aren't going to be flooded or make flooding worse. You've got to grow in places that don't make our traffic congestion problem worse, right? So the growth has got to happen in a way that actually makes the community better. And that's the challenge. That's what we're looking at with this comprehensive plan. And that's what we've really got to do as a, as a community is understand and work together to figure out where development should go, what it should look like, how it should behave, and how we move around the region so that we actually have a better quality of life in the future. Okay. Thank you for that very detailed and thoughtful answer. I want to go back to something that you, you mentioned, which is very uh, key to how Charlestonians, Native and the ones who move here, kind of view the city, especially Peninsula Charleston. There's a, there's a cultural makeup uh, that the city has become known for around the country and around the world. What does the comprehensive plan do to preserve and protect that cultural makeup? Gosh, it's such a good question. You know, um, that, that this place, the Low Country, uh, of course, is, is such, it, it's a place that has so many native um, cultures that are unique to this place and are different from anywhere else in the country. And when we think about the, the various cultures that make up Charleston, I think anybody who's been here for a long time has seen change take place, right? You've, we've seen the city become different in many ways as it's grown. And I think it's important to point out the fact that the comprehensive plan, this plan that we're working on, what city planners do um, is about how the physical infrastructure of the city grows over time, about where housing goes, where jobs grow, how transportation is built, um, how the natural environment is preserved. That's what we do as city planners. And those are the choices that your elected officials will make. So when we do this work, we are not directly saying that this is about one culture or another. We are not picking winners or losers in the various cultures of this place. What we are doing is asking the community to help us create a better built environment so that we can maintain equilibrium and stability and help those who need the assistance uh, to remain in place at the same time that we prepare for growth. It's a holistic approach. So we're not social engineers, right? We're not, we're not choosing this culture over that culture. What we're doing is looking broadly at the city and trying to make sure that we've remain affordable, that we can get around, that we have protected those who have been subject to flooding or other environmental stresses. So that's a kind of a broad answer. I will also say this. Um, we, we in the city absolutely acknowledge historical inequities that have existed between cultures and specifically um, for black folks in the city of Charleston who have historically been oppressed. We acknowledge those, those inequities. And this plan does speak specifically to our historically African-American neighborhoods, how they can be preserved and the things that we need to do to help folks remain in those neighborhoods. I wanna just get to that topic specifically because this place, Charleston is so important to the black communities of the nation. And we do acknowledge that legacy. Like I said, we're not social engineers, but we know that there are places that need to be protected and we are gonna look specifically at that issue. We've heard that loud and clear from the community and that's incumbent upon us as planners and elected officials too. So it's a long answer, sorry, but it's a complex uh, question. <laughs> don't, don't, don't apologize. And so that, that brings me to a, 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 another uh, special question, as I said, you are the director of the planning department, correct? That's right. And I, I heard some news recently, I'm not <laughs> sure how true it is, but that in that role that would be coming to a close soon because you've accepted a new position, uh, I believe it's in Boulder, Colorado. Um, and I loved all the answers that you gave us tonight, but 
since this will probably be your last official interview in the capacity that you have, what would be your parting words um, as the city continues to work on this plan for growth for the next 10 years? Uh, what would be your, your, your parting words to the city as they move forward? Wow, that's a, that's a tough and that's the hardest question tonight. Um, well, um, the parting words are this. Um, Charleston has got to do what is right for Charleston. And for that to happen, we have got to hear from the people who live here, from the people who work here, people who come to school here. Y'all have got to weigh in on this plan. You've got to get online and give us input. Talk to the planning commission. Talk to the elected officials at city council. They need to hear from the folks who are affected by this work. This is the community's chance to chart its future in many ways. That's what we need to do. And that's the only way that Charleston can do what is right for Charleston. With that said, um, it's a really bitter, bittersweet uh, change for me. And this place is my home and we're gonna miss it so much. Um, but I wouldn't leave if, uh, if this plan wasn't in great hands with, uh, with, with you, uh, with Eric and Patika and the whole team on the, on the planning department. So y'all are gonna do a phenomenal job. I wouldn't leave if it wasn't in great hands. Well, thank you, Jacob. This is indeed bittersweet for us as well. Uh, any other final parting words? Well, I think um, Charleston's a really special place. It's one of the most unique cities in the nation. And the people who live here and the people who do this work, um, all of you, it's clear that everybody cares about this city. The engagement of citizens with this process is just critical because this place is worth protecting, it's worth saving, and the cultures that are in it are worth saving. Um, so keep doing this great work, and uh, I have a confidence that this plan is going to be the best one we've ever done. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you so much, and best of luck in Boulder. Thanks. I'll need it. That and a big coat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. Well, this has been Community Conversations with Community Solutions Consulting, Mr. Jacob Lindsay, Director, Planning Department for the City of Charleston, talking about the importance of the comprehensive plan. Please tune in to our next conversations, which will take place next week. Thank you.